can uh, experience this life. He, he didn't. He didn't just give us the Holy Spirit so that we can look, look to the next life. You ain't gonna need them in the next dimension. <laughs> you, you're gonna have Christ without measure. You're gonna be in the fullness. You know. You're gonna be able to do like the Scripture says. You'll be known even as you're known. No veil, no limitations. But the Holy Spirit, the administrator of the kingdom, has been sent to the earth. And he's not just here to try to uh, make sure like make sure you, you're you good or bad and all those other things. Because that's what we kind of think about the Holy Spirit is that he's in our life to make sure that we're doing what's right in the sight of God. And that's sin consciousness. And that's carnal mind. <laughs> He's in, he's, in, he's in your life. He's in the, he is, his main function is a equipper. You know, and so that's why we spent time, we talked about his administration and how he's been sending the earth and how the procreation is so important. Because I'm under the, under the impression that if you negate or make light of or you treat it with contempt, the whole born again experience, and you think he's just going to go to door number two, it's not going to happen for you. you. That's why I spend two and a half teachings on the procreation. The procreation is so important. You know, I spend more time on procreation than I did anything else so far. And because I got to get us to the point to understand. You know, and that's why we looked at all of the parallels in scriptures. We looked at Genesis. We hung over there. We looked at John 20 and 22, right? Mm -hmm. And we saw that there is a, a, a creative process that the Holy Spirit has been sitting in the earth to do. And he is forming, shaping, and molding a new creation man. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a people in the earth who's going to reflect just as they see in the life of Jesus, mm -hmm. it is going to become a part of us. Mm -hmm. I know it seems hard because of our surroundings that that is even possible. But as we yield to the Holy Spirit and trust in Him, it will become more, it will become more possible that it is, okay, we're, we're sin abound. Grace. Grace, I mean, that, you know, that, that right there lets you know a whole bunch of things. Mm -hmm. So where you missed it much, you're going to have a, a, a God's going to increase your ability to get things done. Grace is going to abound. Mm -hmm. And it can't abound without the role of the Holy Spirit in your life. Mm -hmm. And he's not a silent part. Yeah. He is the paraclete. He's been called so alongside us. And that's why I kept reiterating to us. How important it is. He had breathed into us just like he breathed into uh, when we looked at the parallel story and saw how God breathed into Adam and then you know that was the original creation and then the new creation and the new birth he breathed into the, the disciples when he would gather to the other room. Right? And he created a, a new wine skin. And then the new wine didn't come into the earth until Acts 2. Right? How many know that? Yeah. I mean, he breathed on them. Oh, y'all ain't like y'all. Oh, yes, I said it before 20 times, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. The new creation for the New Testament was in John 20. That's the new wine skin. The new wine, new technology, new level of perception and understanding came through the new wine, which is the Holy Spirit. Book of Acts, Pentecost, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why he, he breathed on them. But they had, they did not get filled with the Holy Ghost because according to John 7 and 38, he had not yet been glorified. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So he gave them the spirit of Christ. That is the new birth. Every man, every believer has the spirit. Every person has the spirit of Christ. Mm -hmm. that'll, that'll blow you up right there to say, I just said every person because most of us think it just belongs to the body, no. to, to the church. I'm here to tell you that's a whole other subject what Peter talked about over there. So I, I, I better digress real quick. But he's sent in the earth to do so many things. So we're going to kind of see if we can get, you know, get some good, better understanding of it. I'm going to leave uh, procreation for another time. Maybe we'll visit, revisit it. I, I like walking through uh, the aisles of washing and regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost. I can spend the rest of my life talking about it because... That is one of the handicaps that's in the church. We don't really understand it, what it means with the washing of regeneration. And that's what it's all about, God perfecting us in holiness. Amen? Yeah. And bringing you into the newness of life.
Paul just didn't pin that just to be trying to introduce us to something. He was trying to document to us to let us know we can have a point of reference and be able to see that we have, we don't have to depend on our form of birth. Just as we put on the earthly image, we can put on the heavenly image. That's why Paul gave us the dichotomy in 1 Corinthians 15. There's the image that's above and there's the image that's beneath. And we've been born from above. And now we need to learn how to live from that dimension. And you cannot live there. Right? You can't function there. You can be there because of the new birth. Right? He has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. But the inheritance we received as being citizens of that dimension, we can't function in it. And the only way you're going to function in it and begin to become partakers of that divine nature is through the work of the Word and the Spirit. We have, we have been a church heavy in the Word, but a bit negligent as it relates to the role of the Holy Spirit. Can I get a witness? Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. We got so many different perceptions on the scriptures. Yes. You know, we've got the logos, the rhema, the prophetic words, all I mean, all of the different things, the metaphor wisdom of God that we have coming out of the scriptures, but we haven't learned to at least attempt to articulate and somehow ascertain the role that the Holy Spirit has for us in the present day church. Now we have a lot of historical books about his roles, but we don't have any, we haven't learned to cleave to present truth. And so we're going to talk about present truth. We're going to talk about tonight's title, of this subtopic for tonight is the activation of the Spirit. How can we get active in the Spirit? How can we be activated? We've been born of the Spirit. Am I right? Anybody born of the Spirit? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know, Brother Preacher, I think. Yeah, you've been born of the Spirit. We all been born from above. Now we we have you know where we choose to live is up to us, huh? I like when Apostle when I ran into Apostle Tim, he told me something. He said, and it was, you know he, you know he was just a, a connoisseur of, of, of phrases, but he, he mentioned how that God created the earth, but we form the world we live in. Yes. That blew my socks off. I had never heard it phrased that way. I'm like, wow. Then it put me on a journey on cosmos. And I started looking at cosmos all through the New Testament. The culture, the order, the arrangement of things. And then it brought me to see that it's not just talking about just uh, carnal, sensual things, but it's the religious things that we've been forced, that have been imposed upon us as well. But we, but we cannot be detoxed from it. We cannot be renewed from it. We cannot break the covenant with falsehood. You know what I'm saying? With Isaiah talks about there's a covenant of falsehood. You know, it call it a refuge of lies. That's what that covenant of falsehood. We can't break it without information. We need truth in our new work part. We need to be that's why the spirit, the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of truth. So the more we operate in the spirit, guess what's it now having us? More truth should be happening in our life, right? Yeah. And we, we, we talked about truth. Truth is not necessarily doctrine. Truth is a person. Right? Jesus is a, a, a person. So it's not ideas and ideologies and stuff. Truth should bring us to a point where we're more intimate with the personhood of Jesus Christ. And that's why being activated in the spirit. That's why I've chosen to talk about the ministry of the kingdom. Because the more and more I do my research... And more and more I'm convinced. And then when I look out among us, from the point when we started as a collective group, mm -hmm. and I see the rinse, wa rinse, wash, and repeat. That just means that some people come and leave. Mm -hmm. They haven't been able to, 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 to understand what assignment we're on with this teaching, because this teaching is an assignment, by the way. Mm -hmm. It ain't me trying to fill up time. I'm actually trying to expedite your growth. What, what took me 20 years to get to you, the plowing can overtake the reaper. Like Isaiah said, while I yet pray, my answer comes. Remember he said that, and Joel said that in the first month, the former and the latter. Right? Yes. Huh? 
Because the book of book Revelation 10 and 8 said, Time is no more. Yes. Oh, that'll preach. He ain't talking about cessation of life existence as we know. He's talking about the mystery is finished. And if, the, if we understand what the mystery is, the mystery is Christ being formed in us. So what took somebody a long time ago to do, if you submit to the process and listen to the Holy Spirit and follow up in the lessons, you can take the word can take root in you. And the Spirit of God can bring you into uh, your own metamorphosis. Subtitle again, I'm sorry. The subtitle, Activation of the Spirit. I mean, the Holy Spirit is very important in our life. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why, I, like I said, I spend time on appropriation. You know, and we just we just celebrated most of Christendom. I'm just celebrating. I watched on Facebook and seen all everybody dressed up in white. <laughs> that's what we do on Pentecost, other than first Sundays. So Pentecost Sunday, everybody's arrayed in their white. Remind me of Revelation 1979 where it talks about they had on fire living. <laughs> but, yeah. um, so they were honoring Pentecost, which is great. And we need to learn how to honor it too. And so I'm going to show you how to allow, how to honor the, uh, Pentecost and at the same time allow the activation of the Spirit's role in your life. Okay? So, whew, that's a lot to say. A couple of lot of ground. Got a little less time. So, what, what, is, what, what is the activation of the Spirit? Is it, we're it talking about Paul writing to the church in Corinth, and he's given us nine gifts of the Spirit. He told them that he'd get the nine gifts of the Spirit in three different subgroupings, and we're going to talk about all those things. We're talking about, y'all know the nine gifts, right? Yeah, just say yeah. 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 Nine fruits, nine gifts. Yeah, we need them both. But I'm not going to talk about that part of activation. I'm going to talk about activating the nature. Mm 